Well, writing funding proposals is really writing fiction uh, because um, you have to make promises and these promises need to sound interesting, otherwise it doesn't get funded. Uh, if they are, of course, go too far out, then you know it will be disregarded as being unrealistic. But yeah, I mean, uh, there's there is a certain skill that academics have to develop to write fiction about their own work that still sounds plausible, um, and of course people are rarely kept to their promises. So once you receive the funding later on, you know, barely anybody ever checks whether what you've promised actually, you know, worked out. And of course, you shouldn't be because, <clears throat> you know, it is in the nature of science that you do not know what's going to happen. You do not know whether this will work. If you would know that it would work, it wouldn't be science anymore. So indeed, uh, we need this uncertainty. It's, it's in inherent in what we do and how we do it. But it's of course quite a tragedy that when we interact with funders, um, why do we have to do that in the first place? Um, so why does, let's say, the government not trust us in deciding for ourselves what is an important research topic? In a way, academics are being treated like babies, like, oh, you can't give them any money because, you know, they would waste it on silly things and that would be wasteful and that we cannot allow that. It must be controlled. And that is really a misrepresentation about what academics do. And, 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 and we have an intrinsic interest in improving the world. We want to make this a better place. And we also have good ideas about how to do it. But we are squeezed into uh, a framework in which we, for example, continuously have to justify the benefit for society. So in New Zealand, for example, we used to have a Ministry of Science and that kind of was disestablished and it was merged with the Ministry of Everything, I call it, uh, which is the Ministry of Business, Innovation, la -di da It has an incredibly long name. But as an effect, all funding available has to be tied to some form of industrial interest. So it always has to lead up to some sort of profit generation, improvement of economy. Everything is subdued to economic profit. And that leads then to us coming up with fantastic stories about how this will all work. <laughs> and again, these are just stories. And in a way, it inhibits us to do actual real work, the real underlying important work, because sometimes these things are much further in the future. These are more fundamental basic problems that we have to work on and that will not have any impact on the machinery that you're going to sell in, in next year or the year after or even in five years. So this whole tension between, let's see, a societal need and funding and science is, is really problematic. I think this is a serious point because uh, if we speak about how the funding is, is is secured and also that's lead to competition as well and you have to publish and make sure that your research is just the best. And I don't know if, if you think about this issue, if this lack of understanding or maybe uh, the funders don't, doesn't really aware what you do about this, just the... Because at the end of the day you say that we want to make the world better as much as we can and, and also to, in the first place that you are curious about the problem and to be to do science but in this i don't know how to call it but it just make it like uh shocking or you know, like confiscating your abilities to do something uh, you really passionate on if you see this how how, how this can be solved well there are some very easy things and that is um just give the researchers the money. <laughs> just, just give it to them. Don't waste any time on running big processes and wasting all this time of administration. Don't waste time on, on all this uh, politics around it. Just just give it to the people and, and trust them that they will do right. And, and they will. I'm, I'm very much con convinced that scientists will work uh, on this. And there's another view on it is, of course, well, there's one constraint, and that is there's never really enough money for funding, right? So 
uh, all of us could easily cook up research programs that would consume millions of dollars. And if all of us do that, there's just probably not enough money that society can cover up for this. So in a way, the whole funding uh, competition is partly rooted in the problem of distribution, uh, a limited resource. Um, and But then again, there's a, a variety of how you can go about it. So you could, for example, make it extreme. You could say, winner takes it all. Like all the funding goes to one person, you know, and that's it. Or you could distribute it uh, uh, equally to everybody. We take whatever money is available and you just cut it by, you know, how many people you have and then everybody gets the same thing. And then there are all kind of gradients in between. And um, it could be as simple as a lottery uh, to solve that problem. And, and people have been argued that this is actually the mo most effective and possibly the best way. Just do a lottery and you'll be done with it. And then, you know, it's fair, it's square, minimum overhead, and you use most of the money for actual research and not administrating it. But um, then again, you know, I guess politicians somehow think they need to be in control of this and they actually want to be in control of this because if they would just say, okay, you know, we, dish, we just give money to researchers, then they don't really get any media attention out of it. But if they have like, oh, Minister X is proposing a program on improving this and that, you know, then they get a lot of attention out of it. So it's, it's really being abused in a way, uh, in that way as well. And sometimes it's just really, uh, I sometimes really don't know how these things happen. So in New Zealand recently, there was the funding scheme that the government came up with, which, which was called uh, entrepreneurial universities. And the assumption was that New Zealand universities are not entrepreneurial. And to solve this problem, we need to get different types of people to the university. And these people, you know, most certainly cannot be in New Zealand. They must be abroad and they must come from the outside. So they set up this specific funding scheme to get people from the outside of New Zealand to New Zealand. And then, you know, they would make everything entrepreneurial. And there are so many assumptions in there which are just wrong like why would you think that universities in New Zealand are not entrepreneurial why would you think that people who live in New Zealand are not entrepreneurial these are just all really really big assumptions and of course I mean I'm grateful for the government giving money to you know get more people to university that's great I know I love it that's good and and even I, I love inviting my international colleagues to come here great wonderful but in some instances you know it's ends up being silly because sometimes they hire New Zealanders who are originally from New Zealand, you know, who just happen to live abroad to come back to New Zealand. So it, it, this whole thing doesn't really make sense. And whoever came up with this idea, I don't know how and why. I mean, again, I'm grateful for the money that they spend. And it's good that we get more people because that's important. But some of the underlying assumptions, I really don't know where they come from.